Man, where to begin with Adventure Time? It's easily one of my all-time favorite shows. It premiered when I was only 9 years old, and I was hooked from day one. The brilliance of this series was how it essentially Trojan horsed its way into the hearts of millions of younger viewers like myself by seeming like a fairly typical kids cartoon with just a bit of a dark edge during its first season. Season 1 was good for what it was, but very different from what the rest of the show would end up being like. It wasn't until towards the end of Season 2 when the series began to peel back its layers to fully reveal the world it's crafted, a world every bit as fascinating and beautiful as it is disturbing and tragic. Adventure Time managed to be whatever it needed to be. It was funny, it was thrilling, it was heartbreaking, it was weird, and everything in between. But it wasn't just an amazing show in its own right, but also quite possibly the single most influential cartoon of the 2010s. Not only did it kick off the trio of shows that would pull Cartoon Network out of the overall quality slump it had been in for a few years, but it would also mark the start of a fundamental shift in the creative direction of animated shows as a whole. You see, the 2010s was the time when cartoons began to grow up a little. More and more of them began striving to be more than pure comedies. The comedy was still there, but we were now also getting deep characters, darker themes, and overarching storylines. Now obviously, shows like this existed before Adventure Time, but they tended to be the exception rather than the norm like they are now. Now, I won't say the series didn't have its flaws. There was a very notable dip in quality during the sixth season, but luckily the show managed to get its groove back towards the end of its run, with the 8 episode specials being some of the highlights of the entire series. The finale aired about 2 years ago, and while it certainly wasn't perfect, perhaps a little rushed at points, it still ended the show on an extremely high note. But then, just a year later, it was announced that Adventure Time would be coming back in the form of 4 45 minute specials under the banner of Adventure Time Distant Lands, which would air exclusively on the new HBO Max streaming service. When I first heard about this, part of me was a little worried about Cartoon Network not being able to leave a good thing be. But, we've seen on multiple occasions that the best way to bring back a beloved show is usually in the form of a one and done special, or in this case, four and done, with the original creative team on board. Obviously, making a full-blown reboot slash revival that does its own thing while also staying true to the source material isn't impossible, but doing so takes an extraordinary amount of talent. A special, however, allows the writers and artists to hone all of their effort and ideas into a single project instead of stretching them across a whole new show. And after watching BMO, any worries I had about Distant Lands tainting Adventure Time's legacy have all but evaporated. Now, at first, the idea of a full 45 minutes centered around BMO gave me a bit of pause. I love the little guy as much as anybody else, but he's traditionally worked best in a supporting role, with episodes that did put him in the spotlight, such as BMO Noir and Football, being painfully dull. Thankfully, BMO, man I kinda wish this special had a less generic name, is anything but that. Distant Lands has already proven that, even after 9 seasons, there is still so much fascinating stuff left to be mined out of the world of Adventure Time. I always love when we get new tidbits of lore from around the time of the nuclear war that decimated Earth and created Ooh, and this special gives us a pretty hefty chunk, taking place on a space station where the last of humanity has taken refuge. And it's definitely one of the most vibrant, memorable set pieces we've gotten out of the show so far. It consists of that familiar blend of sci-fi and fantasy that Adventure Time is known for, while still not being quite like anything we've seen before. But the real meat and potatoes of the BMO special is, shocker, BMO himself. And the reason why he does work as the protagonist this time around is because his dilemma of always being seen as nothing more than a sidekick is what his whole arc is really about. BMO is simply one of millions of Mo robots that were churned out of a factory during the pre-war days, a proverbial cog in a greater machine. Because of this, we can see him trying to find an identity of his own throughout the original series. And sure enough, his sole purpose at the start of this special is simply to carry out a mission on behalf of Moko, before he's thrusted into a situation that forces him to take charge. We're given a deeper dive into this insecurity of his as he tries to prove himself as a hero, not just to other characters, but also fans, such as myself, who might have doubted his ability to carry an episode. And his offbeat, childlike nature that's always made him so lovable is just icing on the cake. What also helps BMO carry the special is the fact that he's joined by the new character, Y5, who serves as something of a straight man, or I guess straight woman, for BMO's antics to bounce off of. Y5 herself isn't super interesting. She's your typical shy but good-hearted kid who learns the values of friendship and standing up for herself during her journey with BMO. But still, she has a great design and a great voice, and the dynamic between the two is straight up adorable. Animation-wise, 
This is easily the best the show has ever looked. The colors just pop like never before, and there's always so much happening on screen without things ever looking overly busy. And despite taking place in a totally different location, and a totally different time period, the special is still chock full of easter eggs for longtime fans to pick up on. We see characters playing card wars, Mr. M is heavily implied to be Finn's dad, and we hear yet another sitcom theme, this time being the one from Frasier. And as I implied earlier, this all takes place several years before the main series. But despite that, we can see Beemel talking to his imaginary friend Football, even though he seemingly created Football in the episode 5 Short Grables. It's a small nitpick, but still notable for a show that usually pays such close attention to its continuity. So, if you couldn't tell by this point, I think the BML special is a success, and a very strong start to the Distant Land series. I liked it a lot, and it leaves me very excited for the remaining three specials. Now, Lord only knows how long those will actually take to come out considering that production of, well, pretty much everything is halted right now, but whenever we do get them, you can be sure that I'll review each of them as well.